Hello everyone, thank you so much for checking out my channel. My name is, my cat just jumped on the table. My name is Kate and I am here to finally, finally, finally film the long awaited how to become an ESL teacher video. Basically, I've been asking questions, whether it be on Instagram, Facebook, etc., asking if you all wanted to know about what it is like to be an ESL teacher. I don't know what your stereotype of an English teacher might be. I don't know if I fit that little box of yours, okay? But I want you to know all my freaking English teachers were weirdos, okay? And I love the heck out of them. They were my favorite teachers of all time. Just to give you some quick background before we get into the bulk of the video, I am from America, specifically Colorado, and I was teaching English to Korean students in Seoul, South Korea. I did it for nearly a year, and I'm not gonna like list the academy or anything. I might show pictures of teaching, but of course I'm gonna blur out my students' faces. Now, what are my intentions with this video, you may be wondering. Well, when young Kate was looking for jobs in Seoul back in 2018, I couldn't find a single source on the internet that gave me one comprehensive single site where everything that I needed in order to go through this process was listed. This was the video I needed when I was searching for a job. Not everyone can have as wonderful of a friend as I had. Shout out to Danny. She is the most lovely ray of sunshine. I miss her so much. She's still currently in Seoul as we speak, but she was the one who guided me through all of this. I seriously cannot imagine how someone would figure this out on their own. I really don't because I don't know what country you come from, but for myself, when I was looking up how to do all of this, I mean, it was so scattered. Also, let's get real, government documents are hard to understand, no matter who you are, not to mention that a lot of the documents had a lot of Korean language. So that is why I am here as your fairy godmother. I'm here to try to help you all out in the ways that I was helped back when I was going through this. So hopefully you learn a lot from this. Feel free to check out my links below. I went ahead and sectioned everything off. I know the process can sometimes take some time and you may need to revisit this video depending on where you're at throughout the steps. Before we get any further into it, I do want to let people know in case they are excluded by this route, here are the people that unfortunately cannot qualify for an ESL teaching position. Now, unfortunately, not everyone can do it, but another reason I'm making this video is to remind a lot of people that this job is actually available to them. I feel like if it wasn't for K-pop, honestly, I would not have even known that this was a viable career option for myself. I wouldn't say any of these rules are like, set in stone per se, but I would say they're the general consensus on what qualifies for an ESL teacher in Korea. Number one, you must have a bachelor's degree. Now, in case you don't, I went ahead and researched some other methods that you can take, but most jobs that you're gonna find require a bachelor's degree. Number two, you're gonna need a clean record. There is gonna be a background check that begins your process with schools, and obviously you gotta pass that, so. Number three, Make sure you have some money to spare. I know this might not be an option for a lot of people. Luckily, what is going to vary that total amount that you're gonna spend on this application process really depends on how quickly you just need this job. A little more background on my story. I went out to Korea in September of 2018 fell in love with the country, and that is why I was looking for an immediate job move. I was trying to do this quickly. So, I'm gonna guide you through it if you want it done quickly, but just so you're aware, you can typically take a cheaper route if you do want this process to just last a little longer, if you're not as much in a rush as I was, per se. We'll get into the total budget later in the video, but make sure you have some money to spare for this process. Four. A decent enough resume. Honestly, just make sure your resume is spruced up, that you have that degree listed on there. Make sure you go ahead and highlight the things that really relate to children or English. Honestly, there's probably more things than you can even think of. So I went ahead and dug up through my emails the original resume that I attached to all of my applications. 
And as you can see, a lot of it is actually just customer service related. So I wrote for magazines, I helped out with restaurants and property management. I even went into my past there and talked about how back in high school I used to run little kids birthday parties. Just try to incorporate anything in your history that makes you seem like an experienced candidate who knows what they're getting into and that you'll do well with children, your bosses, etc. Five, you'll need a passport. Now lucky for me, the US passport is one of the most, um, what's the right word? Dominant passports, powerful passports. Let's just say the United States passport grants people a lot of privileges. And this was the case for my visa as well. It was pretty easy for me to present and scan that passport for all of my documents, which again, we'll get into more later on in the video. Six, you gotta make sure you can pass a drug test, okay? Now, some of you know I medicate with cannabis. You've maybe even seen that on some of my other social media platforms. And I really quickly want to kind of destroy this misconception that people who use cannabis for whatever reason are lazy, they can't hold down a job, blah, blah, blah. Luckily for me, it was very easy to cut cannabis out of my life, and I made sure that I cut it out a good month or two before I left for Korea. Okay, time to finally get into the meat of the video, what you all are here for, the actual process. Step one, we're gonna head over to a place called ESL Cafe. It's the only website I've ever personally used just because it really does have everything you could possibly want all within the page itself. So if you can see here, I already went ahead and highlighted where you should be searching on the site. We're gonna be looking at the Korean job board and you're just essentially gonna job hunt. You're gonna sift through a number of academies and hagwons. Something that can make this process so much simpler is linking up with a recruiter. Now, don't don't be intimidated. You do not have to pay them. They make commission themselves. They are just there to help you. I went through a service called Apple Tree. I even have a referral that I just found randomly. <laughs> when searching through my email. And if you all want to use it, it looks like I can get some money from it. So win-win. They make the process so smooth. Honestly, it's like having a little friend kind of holding your hand throughout the whole way. Even when I arrived in Korea, they picked me up, they provided my taxi that then led me to my accommodations and we'll get into that more. Yes, your job does provide housing for you. You don't have to worry about the housing market or anything like that. When you are scrolling through all these jobs and sifting through what company looks like it's gonna suit you, make sure you really are checking each academy's standards. Make sure they are following visa laws correctly the last thing you would want is to be roaming around the streets of Itaewon just chilling cops come up to you they check your visa it's illegitimate you had no idea the school is the one that screwed you over yes this can happen so that is why you want to make sure that your contract is completely legitimate there's not any weird loopholes stack a lot of them side by side honestly when you're doing your research just make sure you look at plenty of organizations where you can kind of compare the benefits to really see what is normal in terms of a contract. Also, really make sure that you're checking the location of your organization. Decide beforehand if you want to be living in the city of Seoul or if you want to be further south in Busan. Wherever you want to be, check out the culture and climates of each place in determining where you think is going to be the best fit. Okay, so now let's assume you've reached the interview portion of this process. There are some vital questions I believe you should ask your employer just to get more information on the school and what you're getting into exactly, okay? So one, what curriculum does your school use? Do they use Princeton Review, Pearson, etc.? Just try to make sure that they're not forming their own curriculum. A lot of Hogwans have this tendency to want to create their own English program. And although I applaud the effort, typically they are not even native English speakers themselves. So the irony kind of comes from this fact that you are being taught and told how to teach English a certain way when you're actually the native English speaker. But regardless, List, just search for the schools that are already following a verified and standard curriculum. There is a separate website called the Korean Blacklist. I would also recommend checking out your academies on that to make sure that your academy is legitimate. But there's my baby in the background. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that that link is below for you. Just go ahead and use the search function on your laptop and search for your school's name. It's much easier than scrolling through all the schools that are listed. 
and from there just confirm that your school is not on that list. Again, I repeat, you do not want the school to be on that list. If it is, that could just be a disgruntled employee who is really upset with a school for whatever reason. Here's to hoping that the Hogwan is actually good and they have implemented changes over time. Always do your research on a school and make sure that they do not appear on any list. You could also search Reddit to make sure that your school does not pop up anywhere. Also, I would highly encourage you to reach out to some of their current employees. Often disgruntled employees don't give the best reviews. I mean, they're kind of legitimate, but I would just head to the current employees. I feel like they're the best source to go to. Giving the academies the benefit of the doubt, you never know if they have changed their teachers over time, if they've changed their program. Just trying to play devil's advocate here. Will I have a co-teacher? How many of them are going to be native versus foreign co-teachers? Native teachers are going to be your teachers that already come from an English-speaking country and typically have English as their first language. Whereas your foreign teachers are going to typically come from Korea or other Asian countries and have learned English as a second language or third. Personally, I like having more co-teachers, as sometimes you can get a little homesick in Korea. It's really nice to have people who already speak the English language, and you can just communicate with them a little bit better, explain your experiences to one another, and just feel more at home in this foreign country. Make sure you ask your employer what a rough schedule of your day looks like. From sun up to sundown, how many hours are you working? How long are your classes? How large are those classes? Logistics like that. Make sure you ask your employer if you're getting paid for your training courses. It would really suck if that came out of your own personal pocket. I know I did not have to pay for any of my own training. The only payment I had to personally pay for was getting my health checkup when I arrived in Korea. That was my drug test, you know, my urine test as I mentioned. Also, I think it's a pretty smart move to ask your employer if they can send photos of your housing. It can be super helpful to research your area, find your closest subway stations or your local market are, Daiso's, etc, etc. Also, on top of your rent, make sure you confirm what other utilities are covered. This includes airfare. With most contracts, it's typical to have one way of your airfare covered by the company. Oh, and lastly, here are just some general tips when you're interviewing with schools. Remember to be happy first and foremost. You're interviewing to hang out with children. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So show that you're passionate about them. As I mentioned, make sure you take a look back at your resume and find ways that you can highlight the times that you've worked with children, English, or education. Some typical questions that your bosses will ask you will be something like, how would you handle a stressful situation? What if you're stressed with a student? How will you keep a kid's focus? What if you're stressed with us, your boss? What are some of your weaknesses and strengths? Here's another little random tip. When you're doing an interview, just tell your employers you want to stay in Korea for a while. I mean, seriously, just trust me on this one. Say that you intend to teach English for multiple years, that you maybe even want to go to grad school or get further education in English. It just automatically boosts your chances of employment because if you're up against someone else who says they're only intending to stay in Korea for a couple of months, you already look better than the other guy, so... All right, portion number two, your background check. This is a huge portion of the ESL process. First, what we're gonna need to get done is fingerprinting. So I'm assuming that this is something that varies state by state, but here in Colorado, I was lucky enough to just research Colorado fingerprinting. It was really easy to look up their location. I'm pretty sure it only cost me $5 in total. And the whole process took a matter of minutes. They just went through and took scans of each of my fingerprints. And from there, then they printed out a couple of copies. I believe the standard is you receive two copies of your fingerprints, I'm not quite sure. Just make sure you go ahead and request as many copies as you can get. Typically it's better with all of these documents that you have multiple copies of them and if possible electronic versions of them. This makes it a lot easier to send documents to your recruiter, schools, etc, etc. Okay, once we have our fingerprints, the next step is going to be to verify those prints. I went through a service called National Background Check Inc. and this is where they processed my prints. 
Once you go ahead and submit your fingerprints to this company, you'll receive an email coming back that essentially verifies if you pass the background check or not. This email will need to be opened within 48 hours. It is a crucial document for you to open and save almost immediately. So make sure you're checking your phone, your laptop, whatever device it may be, and you download that document. So in terms of budgeting and how I am reaching this grand total on what I believe you will spend, I'm taking what I remember for my prices as well as Danny's calculation to kind of fudge around and give you my best guess for a number. In terms of the national background check, again, Danny and I were both expediting the process, so it cost us about $140. Now again, you might be able to make this process cheaper by having it take a longer time. Believe it or not, we are not even finished with this bad boy. Now that we have our background check, we are gonna go ahead and get it apostilled. This is a fancy term that just means we are gonna state notarize this document and essentially tell our future academies that hey this background check is legal it is verified on the state level this verification comes in the form of a fancy little gold star sticker and just make sure we remember this term apostille we are going to be using it again this cost upwards of $50 I want to say somewhere around that range okay everyone now this third section is going to be all about your diploma we're gonna head over to our local UPS, or at least that's where I went. I was luckily really close with a lot of the UPS workers. I lived and worked in the area, so they kind of were used to seeing me and cut me a lot of discounts, which was really nice. But what we're gonna be doing here is getting our diploma scanned. And then essentially with that scan, we are gonna go ahead and notarize it one more time. We're gonna get that apostille. So this process is a lot easier with the diploma. It only cost me, I wanna say like five bucks for the scan itself. And and then in order to get it apostille, that involved me physically going over to the Colorado State Department. Or maybe it was the Secretary of State? One of the two. The reason I physically went in person was just because I didn't want to wait and pay for the cost of shipping it to them, waiting for it to come back, paying for the return postage. So I just physically went in there. Again, this was a very quick process. I'm pretty sure I just did a walk in. Make sure you pay in cash though. It did cost me $15 in cash to get that verified. Then once we have our notarized diploma, we're gonna go ahead and scan that one more time and we are going to send that to our recruiter and our schools as well. Alrighty, next we have our visa. Once we have sent over all the verified documents we need to to our school of choice, they are gonna go ahead and send an email with that issued visa number, as well as a bunch of additional documents you'll need to fill out for the visa process. I went ahead and showed some of these documents. Again, they're like half in Korean, half in English. There were still a couple of other ones I had to give to my academy. I'm not quite sure if these are general documents that you should expect as well. I had to disclose what medications I was on, as well as give a self-medical check form. Further, I had to give a copy of my passport photo ID, and then I also had to print out five little passport size photos of myself. I got my photos taken at UPS as well. I just walked in, I was freaking sick that day. So I looked tragic. Funny little side note, when I arrived at my academy, they said that I was far prettier than my photo suggested. Um, make sure that you get those photos taken of you. Your employers are gonna use those for various documents. Also, I had to give my academy a copy of my resume as well as my recruiter. They both had to have one. And then of course, finally, a signed copy of my contract. Once we finish filling out those documents, we are gonna ship them as well as our passport to the appropriate Korean consulate for your state. So for me, Colorado is in the jurisdiction for San Francisco. So that's where all my stuff went. It was really scary shipping my passport. I think I went ahead and paid additional fees to make sure that was an expedited process. And then eventually that passport returns right back to you. And yes, you are gonna be in charge of paying for that return shipping. And it'll come with a fancy visa sticker now on the inside. Now that you have your visa, you are set to go, essentially. That's pretty much the end of the process. Now that your passport is verified, you're gonna be able to make it through clearance when you're at the airport and head to your destination in Korea. So yay, you're all done, hopefully. <laughs> I broke this down in an easy enough way for you to understand the process. I tried to include as many clips and videos and rough estimates of things that I could. According to my calculations, 
According to my calculations, I feel like it'll cost anywhere between 200 to 250 US dollar. Again, I wanted this process expedited. I needed it done very fast. I was trying to get my booty to Korea in about a month's time. And I feel like you can do it honestly in that time, if not quicker. Like I said, I was sick and there wasn't as much of a rush as I thought. I got it done in about two months time. You can get it done in one month, I bet. Everything is gonna depend on what country you're coming from, what mailing service you're using, how fast you want things to move, what company you're doing, what recruiter you have. Seriously, like there are so many variables and I want you to remember at the end of the day, whatever money that you put into this, you will ultimately get so much back. Like I already mentioned, the school covers your rent, your phone, so many utilities often. It covers your visa. It covers medical expenses. I know I had insurance and most contracts do give you insurance as well as that one way flight ticket. So a lot of things do get covered, but I wanted to go ahead and spend the last of my time answering those questions that I previously mentioned in the beginning of the video. First, I was asked on Cassie by Inst... First, I was asked by Cassie on Instagram, were you teaching English? Were there other ways you were funding your life there? Yes, I was teaching English. I taught kids anywhere from kindergarten to middle school. I had about mm, roughly seven to eight classes a day, and my teaching times often ranged from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. at night. I usually came in around noon or one, depending on how much time I wanted to give myself to prep. And depending on what school you go with, sometimes prep time is already included in your schedule. Sometimes it's even paid for. That's something else I would definitely ask your employer when you're bringing up the contract. In terms of funding my life, luckily, because I was an ESL teacher, so much of my funds were already covered by the program. That's why it is such an accessible route for so many people. And I feel like if it is your first time traveling, it's such an easy thing to adjust to. They really make the whole pathway easy for you. I did know a couple of people that would often tutor on the side and teach kids English on their own time. Of course, with your visa, that becomes an issue. So make sure that depending on what visa that you have if you have clearance for that or not you might not be allowed to do that legally and yeah next question how much should a person expect in terms of income so I would say for first year teachers typically you're going to be looking for contracts that are paying you anywhere between 2.1 to 2.3 million won. That is the Korean currency system in their country. That is gonna be a pretty standard amount of income. Now, usually 10% of this amount is deducted for taxes, healthcare, your pension. Depending on what country you are from, this might look a little different. So in my case, being from the United States, I was really, really lucky. All of my pension money I was actually able to obtain at the end of my contract when I was leaving the country. It pretty much funneled into my bank account about a month after my contract ended which was super awesome it's pretty much like retirement money I know for some countries like some of my Irish co-workers their money they cannot obtain until they retire so I felt super lucky in the fact that I could take mine out immediately on top of this typically your average utility bill is going to equate to around a hundred thousand won this is not that much money obviously in some of the hotter or colder months when you have that heat or AC on a little more your bills are going to fluctuate but but generally your bills should be pretty cheap. I had a bad experience where uh, my bills were atrocious. That can be another story for another time. But obviously I'm going to try to advise you guys from my own mistakes as much as I can in order for you guys to avoid making those the same way that I did. Okay, now what costs should get covered under your contract? Believe it or not, your cell phone plan usually is covered. Again, this cost might fluctuate depending on how much storage you want, how good of a service you want, blah, blah, blah. Your rent is often going to get covered as well. This is usually the biggest perk for teachers, knowing that your housing costs are covered. Yes, you can essentially live in Seoul for free or wherever you'd like to in Korea. Or if you choose to not go with the housing that the school provides, they typically give you a housing allowance of around 400,000 won. This can get you a decent apartment for sure, but do bear in mind that often Korean security deposits are atrociously high. We're looking at upwards of like three, four, five million won for your security deposit. So unless you have that money just randomly sitting around, often the housing that the school provides for you is gonna be the best case for you, especially if you are doing this for your first time. It's really nice to have the school 
take care of everything. You just show up to your place, all your utilities are taken care of. The adjustment is really easy in terms of jobs you can have around the world. Would I do it again? Yes, totally, in a heartbeat. Although I had my own personal issues with my contract, honestly, I feel like there's not time for that in this video. If you guys want that in another video, feel free to comment below. Or if you have any other questions, feel free to obviously comment below. But yes, undoubtedly I would do it again, especially if I got a better contract. And now after going through the experience one time, I feel like I know a lot better what I would look for in a future contract. Okay, the next question I received was, do you have to speak Korean? And honestly, I feel like this is such a valid question, not only for just in the teaching realm, but living in Korea in general. I feel like Korea is luckily such an English friendly place. Most people there speak a decent level of basic English. And then you'll also come to find that English is on most of the signs and directions out there. Now do be warned, Google Maps sucks in Korea. If you know how neighbor works, that's super helpful. But unfortunately, you kind of have to know the Korean language to know how to navigate that site. But I have heard, I believe that there's maps on there as well as so much other information. It's like a search engine like Google essentially. But to answer your question, no. You do not need to speak Korean to be an English teacher, nor do you need to speak Korean to live in the country as a whole. My friend Emma on Facebook asked me, what did I do with my and how did I get it to Korea? Essentially, how did I pack all my stuff up and move it across the world? I parted with so many things. I got rid of about 12 or 13 good garbage bags full of clothing that I gave away to Goodwill. I only brought two suitcases with me as well as a couple carry-on items. So I really parted with a lot of things. I only brought like my books, my essential clothing. I bought a jacket out there in Korea. I parted with a lot of shoes. You know, I only brought like my laptop and stuff which ultimately died in Korea as well you have to get used to giving up a lot of things I'd say that's just ultimately it if you are trying to live that nomad life you got to get rid of material things and of course you got to ask about Korean food so best and worst I love some kebsav which is essentially pork in Korean I love kimchi jjigae just kimchi pancakes I love Korean food in general it's amazing. It's the best food ever. I miss it all the time, but teaser, teaser moment. I am moving to LA in about, oh my God, like a week now. And obviously there's a lot more Korean barbecue out there. Expect future videos to be on the beach, y'all. Uh, uh, uh. Worst food, I am not a fan of lamb at all. Says the girl seen with lamb earlier in the video. I hate lamb, let's get real. Just the smell, the taste, everything about it sends shivers up my spine, gives me the heebie-jeebies. Lamb and I don't vibe, that's my worst food. Yeah, and like I said, if you guys have any more questions, of course, let me know below. Message me wherever, I would love to answer them because Dang it, this video should have been made long ago. These questions should have been answered long ago and I feel like this process should be so much easier for anyone who wants to do it. I know when I was trying to find all these web pages and documents and whatever on my own, it was just, it was just a mess. It was just a mess, so. Hopefully this helped you guys out. Look forward to future videos, including a lot of footage from Korea. And if any of you actually like follow through with this process, let me freaking know. Use my referral, shouting that guy out, and enjoy Korea, guys. Like, holy guacamole. The experience changed my life. I loved being a teacher, uh, parts of it. I love the kids, we'll put it at that, but I love Korea, the country as a whole. I would love to go back there, do it, freaking do it, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. Okay, bye, love you all. See you later, till next time.